Hey you guys, today I'm going to be talking about my tonsillectomy recovery and honestly I can't even believe that I'm filming this video because I never thought it was going to end. Like every day just kept getting worse and worse and I was in so much pain and it was the worst experience of my entire life. Um, and I was like, oh, it's, it's never going to end. Like, I'm going to be stuck like this forever. But today is day 15 post-op. Um, I went to the doctor today uh, for him to look at my throat. And he said everything looks perfect. Um, and that my tonsils were some of the biggest tonsils he's ever seen. And definitely needed to come out. So, obviously, I'm glad I did the surgery. But that recovery, I mean, I hope it's going to be worth it. So, I'm going to take you guys back to why I even did the surgery. So I have really low immunity because I'm sick all the time and no doctor could figure it out. I was literally sick every month. I always had a sore throat or tonsillitis or strep. I had mono, like I had everything you could possibly think of I had. Um, and I was always sick and nobody knew why and the sickness would last about two weeks and then I'd be fine and then it would just keep coming back. And I finally went to my doctor and I was like listen I think I need to get my tonsils out and he was like all right Jackie like how many sore throats have you had this year and I was like um like 10 or 12 and he was like what so he looks at my throat and he's like oh yeah you for sure need to get your tonsils out so um I originally had the surgery scheduled for March but then corona hit and all non-essential surgeries were canceled and I was also a little bit like apprehensive about going to a surgery center and going to the hospital just around this time just because I wanted to be extra safe um, and then they called me a couple months later and said hey you know we can do the surgery now when would you like it to be scheduled so I'm pretty sure I scheduled it for November but then I ended up having to film for something so I had to cancel that and then eventually I had it set for December 1st I was like I'm just booking myself out for the whole month of December because it is a two week recovery like a full two weeks and everyone's like it's a full two weeks there's no way you're gonna get out of it sometimes it's two and a half weeks and in my brain I don't know why I was like I'm gonna be fine within a week like I'm gonna be the one to beat it and you know be the only person ever to recover from tonsillitis I mean my tonsillectomy quicker than two weeks <sighs> little did I know Little did I know what the two weeks after my surgery were going to bring me. I mean, I watch every YouTube video on people's recoveries and I would watch it, like I was on day two and I would watch it. I was like, oh, I just want to know what day three and day four and day five and all the other days are going to look like. And it's just like all these people just bawling their eyes out saying it's the worst experience of their life. So I was trying to be prepared and I knew what was coming and my doctor literally right before I went under he was like you're gonna hate me for the next two weeks but you need to do this so my mom wrote a really detailed note section um, about every single day that I had I mean look at this it's like it goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on it's crazy so they basically said that you're gonna be on a liquid diet for two weeks like the only thing you can really eat is like popsicles have some jello have applesauce have water if you want to torture me take my food away like that was as much pain as I was in there was nothing that made me more upset and like you know really like dampered my mood than the fact that I couldn't eat and I couldn't eat solid foods and I was just stuck eating like mushy stuff like a baby um that was definitely the worst part about it but um I kind of forced myself to eat more solid food which most doctors like don't really recommend they're like just don't try to do anything that could mess up you know your throat healing but I was like F that, like I need to eat, I need some real food because I I can't be eating applesauce and like mush, like that's just, it's like literally a foodie's nightmare. 
Um, so I definitely started slow. I started eating like mushy things like noodles and stuff like that. And eventually I, the first like I think solid thing that I could kind of keep down was pancakes. My mom just made like really soft pancakes and I would have that with syrup. And I had to take the smallest bites and like chew forever. And my throat constantly felt like it was closing when I would eat, which was the problem. On top of all the pain, which I will get into, it just felt like somebody was like constantly constricting my throat and swallowing was so hard but add that to the element of every time I swallowed it felt like I had like a hundred knives in my throat but let's get let's get into day one and see what happened so I had the surgery at December on December 1st and the surgery only took 25 minutes they were like oh it's gonna be an hour and then we need an hour for recovery the surgery was 25 minutes i recovered for like another 20 minutes and then i went home um i was prescribed pretty strong pain medication which my doctor was like you're gonna need all of it like you are gonna be in so much pain i would never prescribe this much pain medication unless it was for a tonsillectomy and I've never really taken any like hardcore pain medication because I've never had surgery. Like I normally just take Tylenol. But he was like, trust me, you're gonna need it. So right when I got home, I took my first dose of medication and then I took a nausea medication with it because I have heard horror stories of people throwing up while they have their tonsillectomy, which I don't know how I didn't throw up because I have such a sensitive stomach, but for whoever was watching over me while I was having my tonsillectomy recovery, like, I thank you because if I was throwing up, like, I don't know what I would have done. Like, the thought of, like, the stomach acid coming up and, like, hitting the open, oh, like, it's so graphic and disgusting, but, like, the people who have nausea, which are most people, like, I, kudos to you guys for making it through because I thought I had a bad but If I was throwing up during my tonsillectomy, like, I don't know what I would have done. Um, I took one pill and that did not take my pain away at all. I was in excruciating pain. The first day, honestly, now that I think about it, the pain wasn't even that bad, which says a lot because I got home and I was still kind of drowsy from um, the anesthesia, which was nice because I kind of just slept most of the first day. But right after I took my first dose of medication, it wasn't really helping, but I was still sleepy because of the anesthesia, so I kind of passed out for a little bit. And then all of a sudden, as I was sleeping, I just kept having to swallow a lot, which, like, I was doing everything I could to not swallow because swallowing felt like the worst thing on earth. Um, and it felt like something was leaking into my throat, and I was like, I know I don't have that much saliva. And all of a sudden, I spit up, like so much blood and one of the wounds was bleeding which is apparently very normal but I just had it within like the first like two hours um, after surgery and basically they tell you just to drink some cold water and to have like ice chips to kind of like stop the bleeding and shrink the blood vessels which is what I did and it worked and I honestly I didn't really bleed after that I had very minimal bleeding when the scabs were coming off in the later days, but that was the only time that I was spitting up blood, so I was also really lucky with that. After that, I took two pills of my um, pain medication just because one literally did nothing, but after I took two, I started to get really itchy, and apparently that could be like a sign of an allergic reaction, so we called my doctor and he was like, don't take it anymore. like." because if itching is like the first symptom, like who knows like what could have been next. And also that pain medication started just to make me really sleepy and it wasn't taking the edge off at all. So we called the doctor and he gave me a new prescribed pain medication, which I'm pretty sure I took once and it did not do anything at all. Like for the first couple of days, I was in so much pain and not to mention I was waking up every hour at night because like everything I've heard from everybody is like you need to keep your throat hydrated and that means drinking so much water because you don't want it to get dry in there and then the scabs feel like you have rough scabs so I was drinking so much water but drinking hurt so bad obviously but my mom would have to wake me up every hour to drink water but in the first couple days I was waking myself up from just so much pain that like none of the medication was working I didn't sleep like 
through the night for literally the first 10 days. Like I did not get a sufficient amount of sleep at all, like whatsoever. So I was extra tired, but everybody told me like, you just need to rest, like just stay in bed, don't do anything because if you exert any energy, it's gonna be so much worse. So I was just so tired, but I couldn't fall asleep and I literally just laid in bed every single day. I had really, really, really bad ear pain as well. Like whenever my throat would start to like spasm with pain, like it would shoot up into my ears. And the only thing that helped with that was putting an ice pack. So I would have like two ice packs like on both like places right here. I would just put it directly on my ear and that usually seemed to help. The ear pain was always worse at night and in the mornings which kind of just goes for the pain overall. Like it was really, really bad at night and then really bad in the morning. And the only time I kind of felt any sort of relief was like from 12 o'clock to four. But that wasn't until I started just taking Tylenol. And on day four or day three or four, I just started taking Tylenol. I was like, I'm done with these pain medications. One, I don't want all of this like crazy stuff in my system and two, like let's just try something else so I was just taking extra strength Tylenol which somehow was taking the pain away more than like the prescribed pain medication which I still don't understand how my body just reacts to Tylenol better and I remember on day four I felt so good like I woke up with a little bit of pain but then all of a sudden like during the day from like 12 to I honestly I want to say like five o'clock six o'clock I felt so good like I had no pain like I could eat a little bit like drinking water didn't hurt like I felt on top of the world on top of the world and then boy did I jinx it night four like like it's literally giving me chills thinking about it night four was the worst night of my entire life Again, as I was saying, like, I would wake up in the middle of the night with so much pain. And, like, every time I had to drink water, like, my whole body would, like, spasm just because I was trying to get my mind off, like, the pain in my throat. So I would, like, you know, like, you know, hit the bed or, like, I would have, my mom would be, like, massaging my back, like, something. And on night four, I woke up in the middle of the night with such excruciating pain that, like, my body was convulsing for 23 minutes like uncontrollably like my mom like could not get me to like calm down like I I don't even remember what happened this is just like I remember the feeling of it but I don't really remember specifically what happened this is just like what my parents told me but I was literally like convulsing and shaking for 23 minutes uncontrollably and they were like freaked out like what is going on is this like a reaction to the medication like you know what is going on with her Finally, like, the pain just went away and I fell asleep. Um, I also slept in my parents' room next to my mom for the past two weeks because I would have, I don't know what I would have done like without my mom right next to me. Like I would like move and she'd be like, do you want an ice pack? Do you want ice chips? Do you need water? Like, do you want ice cream? Whatever. So she was honestly my saving grace. But night four was so brutal. And I thought that that was the worst day and then and then came day five and then came day six and it didn't seem to ever be getting better. It kind of affected like my mental a lot more like I was physically in pain but I was just so upset at the fact that like I wasn't getting better which I knew that it was normal. I knew I wasn't the only person going through this or who has gone through this. And yes, everybody's situation is different and the way that they recover is different, but generally for a tonsillectomy, like everyone sort of kind of goes through the same thing and you don't really understand the pain of a tonsillectomy recovery unless you've gone through it. And in children, it's super easy, but like the older you get, the harder it is. Um, and I knew that going into it, but I just, I really wasn't prepared for like what it was going to do to me mentally because I cried a lot all the time and I was I was honestly just sad because I just I just wanted to get better and I was trying to do everything that I could to get better and it just seemed like everything was like a lost cause which at the time felt like the end of the world which now that I'm kind of on the other side was maybe a little bit dramatic and you know my parents and everybody were trying to make me feel better and doing everything they can which I mean I was 
very spoiled during this. Like I had people, you know, helping me 24 seven, but it was just so hard because none of them could truly understand like the pain that I was going through. Uh, um, anyways, uh, I didn't start to really see any relief up until around day 10 or 11. The nights and the mornings were pretty bad the entire time. Um, and on night 10 and night 11, I only woke up once in the middle of the night. Which is exciting. Um, but finally we kind of got some sleep during those nights and I only woke up once. The mornings were still pretty bad. It was because the scabs were falling off that it felt like the pain had just restarted all over again but it was a very different kind of pain and it's kind of hard to explain but like think about scabs falling off in your throat and like expose new skin being there um and there was it got to the point where like i knew exactly what it felt like for the scab to fall off but like i'd be sitting there and i'd have a spasm of pain and I'd be like, okay, it's a scab falling off, and I could feel exactly where it was, and then I would take a picture of my throat, and I would see that there's, like, a little piece of blood, be like, where the scab had fallen off. Like, I was so, like, in tune what was happening in my throat that I knew the second something was happening, it was, like, a scab falling off or whatever it was. And I took pictures of my throat every single day, like, five times a day, and to honestly see the change and the growth and, like, how fast, which at the time literally felt like a million years like it was never getting better if i look at day one and i look at my throat today honestly like i'm so amazed by the fact that like your body can do that um i was really lucky i didn't really have any complications um everything went as smoothly as possible as it should i guess or as it can but the tonsillectomy recovery really is no, no joke. No joke, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I will never show anybody those pictures of my throat. I showed them to my friend and like she almost threw up. So I will never do that to you guys. But um, my throat feels brand new. She's a new girl. And I really hope that this surgery was worth it and I'm not going to be sick every two weeks anymore um but if you guys have any questions about recovery or what worked for me um or what i did or if you have any questions about anything at all put them in the comments and i'll try to answer them or just message me on instagram <sighs> thank you guys for watching and being patient with me and letting me heal and recover um i'm glad i'm finally able to kind of describe what was happening in the weeks where I couldn't really be there with you guys and but I'm back now and that's all that matters but yeah this was the worst two weeks of my life it was the worst two weeks of my life but I can't believe I'm on the other side that's all that matters is that I recovered and we are good to go I can't believe I'm here the amount of times where I was like I just wanted to be day 14 that could be done well it's day 15 guys i'll see you guys next week